What's up everyone, it's Dakota with Tarmi, and in this video we are building on the capabilities of our three statement dynamic financial model. And I'm introducing something today called what if parameters. These are items in Power BI. It's a capability that's built right into everyone's version of it that allow you to effectively choose different variables and do sensitivity analysis and even scenario analysis very quickly when you're doing things like financial modeling. And obviously this is applicable to a lot of different things. So what we have is three different sensitivities here, revenue growth and a nice little user interface slider here. So that's good for your customers. Cost of goods sold, percentage of revenue, and then our interest rate. This is just an example of three quick sensitivities we could do in our model, and I'll show you how to build them with what if parameters. Hey, so we're back in our financial model and we're learning about what if parameters. And if you have any questions about how to build this model here with the three financial statements, make sure to check out the videos down in the description. Moving past that, let's jump right into the content we want to cover. So I've created a little area to the right of my model here, just called sensitivities. And if you go up into the modeling ribbon, there's an area called new parameter here. Hit the drop down and you'll have two selections. One is numeric range, and we are doing numbers modeling here. So we are going to use numeric range. And that creates a parameter that's effectively any selection of a number between the beginning point and the end point that you define. And the next one is called fields, which we will not be using, but it's also very powerful in which you can take different columns from your data tables that are in your Power BI report, and you can effectively switch them out in your visuals very quickly just by selecting that parameter, right? It's just like another variable. So let's do a dynamic way for us to adjust our revenue growth assumption going forward. Click numeric range. We're going to give it a name, call it revenue growth percentage. And because it's a percentage, we want decimal number, not whole number. There are other options here like a fixed decimal or a whole number. If I had clicked whole number and I said that my increment was going to be 0.01, I would get a little error, right? Because this is a decimal number. So make sure you know which one you're clicking. On the minimum and maximum, that's the ends of your selection, right? So you're going to be able to select any value in between those two points. The increment is that stepping stone from your beginning to your end. So I'm doing 0.01, otherwise known as 1%, right? Because I want that granularity for my financial modeling, just to be able to go up and down 1%. The default you can set, I'll just put in 5% uh, revenue growth as a default. And then there's a checkbox down here to add a slicer to a page, which is what we want to do because that actual user selection, it's a slicer visual. It's, um, it's not like some special parameter uh, thing that's unique. You can see that it's exactly like any other slicer visual that you have in your report. So the first thing it gives you is the nice slider bar here and your data formatting is not exactly what you need and it does create a table over here and the table shows you the dax that is actually working to create that parameter so the dax function is called generate series and the first bit of it is your starting point then it's your ending point and then it's your increment so you could actually adjust this and change it to let's say i change it to 0.5 all of a sudden my limit is now 0.5 as opposed to the one that I had in that first user prompt area. So that's a quick way to adjust it without going back in and making a new what if parameter. In order to adjust formatting, I'm sure most viewers are familiar with how to do this, but I'm just going to make it a nice percentage format with zero decimal places. And it gave me a column and let's check out that table. And it's a record for every one of our increments that we told it to create, but it also automatically made us a little measure. And that measure is using the selected value DAX function. And that's going to be whichever, whichever one you click here. And that's useful because you can just reference this measure in uh, your modeling. 
So now let's actually apply this to our modeling. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my income statement table and I'm going to go into my revenue measure, which is down here in the bottom. And what I have here from our previous videos is I've established a growth factor of our revenue for my modeling going forward. What I want to do here is I want to replace the previous place that I was pulling that growth data, which was just a static Excel table. And I want something more dynamic. I want the user slider that I've created here, which will be that measure revenue growth percentage value. Press enter. And just like that, I've now linked this slicer into my model. And let's say I increase revenue growth up to 30%. You can see that revenue growth accelerate there. And then it flows through to our net income, of course, and everything's working great. So just a quick update like that. And I've already got it linked into my model. Now you're probably thinking we could do a ton of different sensitivities for our model here. Let's make another one the exact same way we made the first one. And let's just do a new parameter, numeric range. This one's going to be called our interest rate, right? Because we had debt financing to finance some of our new projects, that new chairlift for Narnia Ski Company. This one's going to be called interest rate, decimal number, and I'll set the ceiling at 20%. Hopefully we're not getting financing for 20%. And the increment will be 1%, and the default will be a clean 7. I'm going to uncheck that add slicer because I just did a copy paste of that previous slicer. And what we need to do here is with our new parameter table, drag in that column that it created for us. And let me make sure you guys can view it. Drag in that column that it created for us. Get rid of revenue growth. And if you can see what happened, it gave us, it gave us some formatting of our slicer that we don't really like. So I'm going to show you here how to adjust that. Under slicer settings, you're going to see all those standard Power BI slicer options. And the one that we want is single value. And that gives us our uh, slider selector here. So I'll do some quick formatting and then we'll update our uh, interest. Okay, now let's link it into our model by grabbing the interest measure that is in our income statement. And what we have here is our interest expense is our debt amount times the interest rate that we were pulling from a static Excel table. No, we don't want static. We want this new dynamic parameter way that we're doing it. And that's gonna be your interest rate value, that measure it created for you. Press enter. And just like that, it's linked over here. So, you know, what if our interest rate just jumped up to 15%? Obviously our interest expense goes up, our net income goes down. If we got cheaper financing, net income goes up and everything flows through great. I hope you guys found this useful on how to create what if parameters in Power BI. And if you have any interest in using this in financial modeling, in which it is very useful for giving your customers and clients nice user interactive ways to do their own modeling, please check out the videos below. Check out the videos on my channel and uh, hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment with what you want to know about next. So thanks for watching. Hope it was useful and good luck.